If you want to support Slopes Game Room, then please click the links that you see in the top comments. Yo, what's up? This is Marky Mark. I tell you what, why don't you watch this? It's party time! <laughs> oh yes! A party that you're no doubt going to wish you was late for, because today is the day that I, DJ Slope, take you back a good few decades and play you music that you might go, Oh yeah, I remember that. I think. And as I jog your memory on five forgotten pop stars, let's get you even more wound up as I show you five games, all of which are horrendous, might I add, based on those forgotten pop stars. Now guys, because this is YouTube, I can't actually play you the music from these artists in this video. There'll be bits in the background to give the sort of flavor and the style of these particular artists, but if you want to hear what they're like, that's what the description's for. Yep, that's if you want to. It's your funeral. Feel free to let me know of any artists I may have forgotten about in the description because researching this video has been so much fun. Hi everybody, I'm DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room and this is 5 video games based on forgotten pop stars. Back in 1993, I was Sega mad. <laughs> Thank God I'm not like that anymore, right? Well, after getting a Mega CD, I went Sega CD mad, as you can imagine. And yeah, 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 you can get slightly better ports of already existing games from the Mega Drive. But the real selling point here wasn't stuff like this. It was stuff like this. Shout out to the awesome gaming news that actually officially released a decent quality version of one of gaming's best ever intros. Anyway, FMV games, I bloody loved them. So imagine my surprise after seeing Michael Jackson live at Wembley Stadium in the early 90s when his support act ended up getting their own Mega CD game too. Hey, yeah, 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 what up? This is Boy Packer and welcome to Make My Video. Got my video edited out there, hooked up and chilling in the control room away your scenario for the miggity 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 mac daddy and the diggity 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 daddy mac crisscross. The hotline is smoking, so let's get right to our first caller, please. Kick it. So basically, as our radical host has explained, you need to answer one of these calls. Eight in total, choose one of only three songs, try and work out how they expect you to edit the video, and then do just that. The three screens along the bottom include the original music video and two random selections of public domain footage in probably the grainiest footage you're ever going to see on the system. You can choose these by clicking A, B or C and then you can add some effects which pretty much should all just say pixelate by using the D-pad and boom. You've just completed a third of the music that this game has to offer. <laughs> Never has there ever been a game I've been more displeased about. It's the only game I sold up to this point as a youngster, and rightfully so. Criss Cross had quite a big impact in the early 90s with this song, and quite literally nothing else. This young rapping duo who wore their clothes back to front, no, seriously, they used to wear them back to front. This was their style, their hoodies, their jeans, their shoes. Well, well, obviously not their shoes, but you get the idea. As a youngster at the time, I'm not too ashamed to admit that the zip on my jeans became bloody annoying to undo, as I too used to wear my clothes back to front, you know, for like a week. But you know what? It was in fact this game that brought me to my senses. Why? Because it's wicked, 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 wicked whack. Ah yes, I wanted to do that for a while. And by the way, there were also three other games in this series too, and they're probably even more forgotten than Criss Cross. You got In Excess, you got CNC, and best of all, you got Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> I still remember the day that I discovered that this was Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> 
If I have somehow connected those dots for anybody else out there that hasn't worked that out yet, then I will be a happy man. <laughs> oh, Mark Wahlberg, what was you thinking? Oh, well, at least Transformers isn't your biggest embarrassment, right? God, that movie sucked. This is Los Inhumanus. And they had a fair few hits back in the 80s, with the main one being Q to Sephil L. S. H. L. S. H. S. L. M. 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 N. N. Simca. Simca 1000. Let's not try and do that again. Because, well, this one translates to it is difficult to make love in a Simca 1000. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering what is a Simca 1000? Well, this is a Simca 1000. And yep, the song is all about the difficulty of bumping uglies in a car like this. Here's a few choice lines from the song. I'm poor and I could only buy a Simca 1000. Pretty vulgar. How difficult it is to make love in a Simca 1000. In a Simca 1000. The seat is not turned back and the position to look for has difficulty. Put your leg here. I'll put it there. We'll have to open up the back door. The steering wheel bothers me again. That is not the whistle you should touch. When I'm rich, I'll buy a bus to catch. Um, okay. As stated, this plus several other songs by the pop group were quite popular on college campuses around Europe, mostly Spain, and this particular song spawns this particular game. Lost in Human takes place in what looks like a typical prehistoric time, especially considering the main character is dressed accordingly. But no, this is apparently Central Park in New York, and your job is to traverse this park with horrifically annoying bad guys getting in your way in an attempt to find the four missing pieces of your stolen Simca 1000. Why? Because your enemy has kidnapped your girlfriend and to make it worse has destroyed the car that you both shared quite a few intimate, although rather annoying according to the songs, moments together. You then leave Central Park, find two keys and a dagger to save your girlfriend and um, <laughs> congratulations. I hope the endless amounts of deaths was worth it. And depending on the version you get, you have the incredibly repetitive music playing in the background at various speeds throughout the game. And all in all, it was absolutely horrible to play this one. The enemy detection is almost non-existent and you're only ever going to finish this if you play it with a poke implemented to give you unlimited lives. As most enemies take a couple of lives, sometimes more, just to get past. Dodge this one like the plague. Or a, um, or a rump in a Simca 1000. Ah, I remember back in the day, I'm talking when I was about the age of five or six, I suppose. I was at primary school and I got a bit of a tummy ache. The teachers called my mum who picked me up and to make me feel better, she got me a VHS of music videos from one of my favourite musical artists, MC Hammer Time. <laughs> yes. Seriously, I remember the exact street I was on, the smell in the air, the temperature, and that horrible tummy ache getting better due to the power of the hammer. Now, to be fair, MC Hammer isn't exactly forgotten as such, but if I told you that he does still make music, then you're no doubt going to be a little bit shocked to hear that he did release music outside of You Can't Touch This. Okay, there are a few more, and old school fans will also remember the nowhere near as popular Adam's Groove, Too Legit to Quit, Turn This Mother Out, Here Comes the Hammer, Have You Seen Her, and my personal favourite, Pray. Why? Because we got to pray. <laughs> yes, during the 90s, MC Hammer was pretty huge. He had his own cartoon, a movie, breakfast cereal crossovers, dolls, you name it, this man got it. 
but since the days of MC Hammer's stardom, he not only still releases tracks whenever he feels like it, but he's also a little bit of an entrepreneur too. There's the obvious record labels, in fact that's how he got his big start in the first place, but he also co-founded the dance video competition site dancejam.com, which no longer exists and even attempted to take on Google themselves by creating another search engine called Wiredo. Anyway, this too failed, as it never left beta testing. Yes, MC Hammer is quite the interesting chap. Looking down his Wikipedia shows endless amounts of business ventures and ideas, and a very interesting section about giving all his old mates jobs at the height of his career to the extent that one of them was even hired to feed his pets. Yep, this led to Hammer being $13 million in debt and no amount of popular upbeat rapping and baggy trouser sales were gonna help him. So, that's Hammer. But what about his video games? Well, obviously his most popular song is in games like Just Dance, the original Just Dance, and obviously it's in the video game rendition of Shark Tale 2. Obviously. But far more interesting than that is the fact that he had his own Tiger LCD game too, where you have to copy the movements of the most disjointed rapper in the world, whilst listening to ear piercing bleepy bloppy noises. It's absolutely killer. But wait, that's not all. You see, during the Mega CD games, GTE Interactive actually attempted to make an official rival to Michael Jackson's Moonwalker game called Hammer vs Evil D in Soulfire. Now there really isn't much to see and sadly a ROM or an ISO has never actually been leaked, but if you're thinking Space Channel 5, you kind of get the right idea. Lost souls will walk across the screen and when MC Hammer shouts Soulfire at them, they will be part of his crew dancing alongside him. MC Hammer was reported to be involved, but the licensing of his videos did at some point fall through, and Sega themselves were apparently not very happy with what they saw when one of the Lost Souls just happened to be a black guy stealing a television set. Ah, who knows why this game got cancelled, eh? This is Renew. Yes, Renew. Give it a rest, comment section. I actually had to look up French interviews to make sure I pronounced that one right. Anyway, to be fair, this one is not forgotten, more like unknown for people living outside of France, because in France, he's a pretty popular cowboy among country music fans. Well, after releasing his first three albums that were all nameless, he released his fourth entitled March Alombre, and according to many, it featured several of his most popular songs which propelled him into stardom. As a lot of folk music goes, the artist actually tends to tell stories that take you, the listener, along a journey with the music helping guide you along that path. And the title track is about a gang in a bar that fight anybody that enters that's not a member of the gang. And, well, there's a little bit more to it than that, of course, like one of the members being obsessed with pinball machines. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. As stated, the album, and to be more specific, the title song, was so popular that it even got a movie based on it. But before that, in 1988, Infograms released a game based on it called Sidewalk for the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum. And the inlay reads... You're really worried because your motorbike has been stolen and you promised to take your girlfriend to the concert organised by the Band Aid Trust, and it promises to be spectacular. You can sense certain complications. If you're not brave enough to confront those who pinched your motorbike, you will never manage to get all the pieces before 7.30pm. After that, your girlfriend will go with John. <laughs> what a b- So obviously this is the inlay for the British speaking folks release, however in France it wasn't a band aid concert that you was beating up gang members to go to, nope it was a Renault concert, which makes a lot more sense as the gang members you fight are kinda related to his most popular song. And that's the game. It's hard to get to grips with at first, but as always when you master it, it's completable very quickly. 
The game honestly isn't too great, even for the time. It wasn't that groundbreaking, especially considering the tiny screen that you navigate in was the same size as a pack of matches on an 80s monitor at that. But I will give the designers a thumbs up though for the art style, which I do quite like. And in case you are wondering, it was all done by French artist Didier Chamfray, who was more well known back then for working on stuff like the previously mentioned Bobo title, Tintin on the Moon, Fantasia and the Toy Commander Racer series on the Dreamcast. This is Sabrina Salerno, and she is the one that I've decided to put at the top of this list. You see, Sabrina, as she's more well known, made a name for herself at an early age after winning several beauty contests at the young age of 16 in her hometown of Liguria, which quickly helped her make her way onto television where she met a famous DJ and producer, and together they produced her first hit single, Sexy Girl. <laughs> Now I don't need to play the music, it's obvious what it's going to sound like. Look, she's got the torn jeans that come up to her armpits, the white t-shirt with the big letters, and she seems to be getting turned on by a boat. I mean, yeah, fair play, that is a bloody nice boat. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Welcome back, guys. Um, where were we? Ah, yes, sexy girl. It was quite a hit, I suppose, topping the Italian and German charts with her perfectly average voice and her um, above average bus size. And it wasn't long after this in 1987 when she released another single off her self-titled album called Boys, open bracket, summertime love, close bracket. Boys. Now, if you know of this singer, this is the song that you're probably going to recognize. But guys, if you've never seen the video that goes with this incredibly 80s song, then you're in for a real treat. Why? Because it's essentially soft porn. Yes, the song is as generic as late 80s commercial club hits go. It gained huge success all over Europe and got to number three in the UK chart. In fact, the song has been covered numerous times almost every single year since its release, with the latest version being on Just Dance 2016. But is it the song or is it the video that made her famous, where Sabrina and her bikini constantly fight against gravity, bringing new meaning to the word nip slip? I mean, seriously. Janet Jackson, move aside. Sabrina has taken the crown. It's insane that this actually aired on telly, but it did, and aside from her incredibly, although to be honest, rather catchy music, she very quickly became known as a bit of a sex icon. Now, if you are part of my channel and this music sounds like it's up your street, then probably the coolest way to get it would be on this cassette right here, which not only has hot girl and boys, but also Sabrina's very own Spectrum game too. <laughs> But, what kind of game are you expecting this to be? Well, if you said beat em up, you would be right! <laughs> Sabrina is being targeted by an assortment of random enemies in this game, and as you would expect, her attacks are threefold. She can kick, she can slap, but most importantly, she can. <coughs> she can inflate her boobs and hit people with them. Yep, Iba Software had just taken her most popular assets and quite literally put them into the game as a weapon. Sabrina became a huge hit, especially in Spain, as pretty much all of the TVs on the night of New Year's 1987 were watching one of three channels that were available to them when yet another nip slip happened, and because of this, everybody knew Sabrina, and that's why they made this game. Certain enemies get flown back by getting hit by these, items like bombs need to be kicked out of the way, and women, well, obviously women are immune to cleavage and high heels, but not a good slapping. Um, that's according to the developers, guys. And obviously there's a couple of bosses that appear, but in all honesty, they are nothing more than a mash of buttons until one of you win. The game is finished in less than 10 minutes, if you're lucky enough, and that's that. Sabrina, the number one game based on a pop star that time has forgotten. Until now, that is.
What? Why are you still here? Why are you not watching that raunchy music video? Go on. I'm not going to judge you. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to all of my Patreons. But first, if you like any of the games that you're seeing on the screen, then please do click the affiliate links below. It really does help me to continue getting things to review for you guys on the channel. So anyway, over to those patrons with a big special shout out going to Gary Pinkett, that retro video gamer, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Haywood, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowlands, Tomek Grabowski, Mr. Vestek, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina, Robertson Dunn, Lefty Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Labonte, Asobi Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Hernanaz, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constantine, Pretendo64, Creamy Elephant, K. Cigana, Blitz Hedgy, Keelink Reviews, Gemma at Mr. T's Shirt, Ye Old Hamburglar, You Right, Dan Petty, Brime Time Penny Sleeve, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softtail, Gregory Arden, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Solox Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kingimo Cut, Tyndall, June the Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Ball Float G, and Petty Mew, Jim Knapp, and Distracted Freak. If you guys want to get your name shouted out, get your name shown, come and see what I'm working on, be part of the bloggy mess that I always do over on Patreon, see exclusive rooms on my Discord channel, and all of the other random things that I probably should be saying here, but I'm forgetting right now. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there. So yes, this is DJ Sloop signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.